Celebrating 35 years of creativity and collaboration, the Veil Dance Festival returns July 28th through August 7th with 12 thrilling performances and numerous special events, including live podcast recordings of conversations on dance all across the beautiful Vail Valley. Don't miss the legendary Martha Graham Dance Company, LA Dance Project, Music from the Soul, Ballet X, Dance Aspen, and an all-star cast of festival artists from New York City Ballet, American Ballet Theater, the Royal Danish Ballet, Boston Ballet, and many more. Tickets for our live podcast recordings are now available at veildance.org slash conversations dash on dash dance, or click the link in the show notes. Tickets for festival performances are also available now at veildance.org. See you this summer. I'm Rebecca King Ferraro. And I'm Michael Sean Breeden, and you're listening to Conversations on Dance. Today on Conversations on Dance, we are joined by Emmy Award-winning choreographer Joshua Burgos. Joshua tells us about breaking into the theater world as a choreographer, how collaborating with other creative teams impacts his work, branching out into television on the hit show Smash, and the full circle moment of first performing in West Side Story and now staging the choreography in the current Lyric Opera of Chicago production, running now through June 25th at the Lyric Opera House. Tickets are available at lyricopera.org. Joshua, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are so excited to delve into all the wonderful things you're up to right now. But since you've never been on the pod before, we always like to have first-time guests give us a really clear view on their background and history with dance. So we just want to go back to the beginning and hear a little bit how you first personally fell in love with dance and what that those early years training were like for you. Sure. Um I grew up at my mother's dance studio. So my mother was a dancer and an actress. And um, she uh, then started a dance studio. So I had my first pair of tap shoes when I was three years old. And I literally was just this, you know, little brat running around the studio, just jumping in and out of classes that were completely inappropriate for me. But I, you know, just kind of ran around doing whatever I wanted. And um, uh I started, uh, you know, I, I I was really pretty untalented and uncoordinated for most of the, <laughs> my childhood. And then some like r- around like when I was a teenager, it started to click and make sense in my body. And, and I started to, you know, really enjoy it. And and then I started choreographing for, you know, I started teaching classes at the studio and choreographing for like the recitals and, and competitions wow. and things like that um as a teenager as well and then um and then i uh you know moved to new york i i actually the reason i moved to new york was i i got a job um and i i i don't like telling this story because i don't want anybody to get any um anybody to get the wrong idea <laughs> I, it was like my first real audition and i booked it so and just no it never it usually never happens like that it's usually right. sometimes it does time. and that's okay too <laughs> that's right yeah <laughs> um and it was a national tour of west side story and i so i went on tour as baby john and then for the second year of the tour i was also the dance captain so it was two years doing the original robin's choreography uh and I learned it. And our director was Alan Johnson. He was in the original Broadway company and he became my mentor. I started assisting him for years and um, and and came back to New York after the tour and uh, worked with Alan and and then started my career here dancing um, and choreographing here and there, you know, odd things for friends, favors and things like that and dancing on Broadway. And one day I got paid to choreograph and I thought that was interesting. And um, I was like, hmm, there, there might be something there. So I kept pursuing, right. you know, and kind of like balancing like the performing career and the um, and the and the choreographing career. And at the same time, teaching a lot of teaching at the dance studios here in New York City, as well as like conventions and and uh, workshops and and universities all over the country. We're going to get back to how this is a full circle moment for you, because that's really amazing. Um, But before we go there, just to delve in a little bit deeper to this choreography concept, I think it's so rare for teenagers to play around with choreography and choreographing. What initially 
gave you that opportunity and drew you to that? And, and how did, did you find it like a different challenge? What kind of process were you going through just as such a young kid? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was because, because I started teaching and I had to come up with, you know, material for class. And then I started working with like the competition groups at the studio, like teaching, you know, uh, choreographing for those groups and then choreographing for my high school musical when they found out oh that I'm a I'm a dancer will you choreograph Fiddler on the Roof and you know that kind of thing um so so the cool thing about it was it was just so much about experimentation you know because there were weren't really any any rules uh you know and and nothing really needed to be a commercial success or anything like that it was just like (laughs) oh I love this song I don't care that it's weird let's do something to it, or, you know. <laughs> right. Um, so it's really helped to find find you know what I loved about dance and about movement and about storytelling and and character and uh, and uh, you know helped to find my voice that I didn't and I didn't even realize that was happening, uh, you know. And it wasn't until I got to New York and started just uh, you know doing it more, and I realized, oh, I've got experience doing this from you know, as a teenager mm. right so the story you told a very, very unlikely tale but it's real that you booked your first audition um I, i'm wondering like what's the process like for getting work as a choreographer then like how is it sort of like about connections or are there ways to put yourself out there so that you can become attached to projects like how, what's what's it look like from the beginning i'm sure like now at this point you know you have so much under your belt that people approach you. But in the beginning, when you're kind of trying to find a carve a path for yourself, what did that look like? Uh, yeah, it's tricky because when I was doing it, um, when I was a young, you know, uh, trying to be young and trying to be a choreographer, there was no internet, mm. right? And no. <laughs> still, there was no, you couldn't like just yeah. put your stuff out there on YouTube and things like that. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, I had to like, like make copies of VHS tapes and send them to people and things like that. So VHS tape, uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a big giant (laughs) tape, uh, much bigger than a DVD even or anything like that. Anyway. So, um, it was tricky and, and that's literally you, you did anything you could do to put your work out there. And it was always, it was usually for free. It was a favor for a friend or a showcase. Mm-hmm. You know, you heard somebody was going to put together a choreography showcase and you asked them if you could be involved, you send them a, you know, a copy of like a tape or something. Uh, and, and, and then it was, um, it was about, you know, getting to know people and, and it's kind of like who, you know, in a sense that, you know, you meet a director or you meet a producer and, um, you, you tell them, you know, listen, I'm choreographing now. If there's anything that you think I might be right for, please consider me. I mean, literally you have to, it's like pounding the pavement and, and, you know, mm-hmm. calling people and, and, uh, you know, trying to make those connections. Um, and, and a reel and it's, you know, having that, that tape, that reel, that choreography reel was so important and it had to be something with sub with substance, but also quick enough so that somebody didn't have to spend two hours watching it. Um, right. you know, it was really tricky, you know, right. to capture somebody's attention, but also give them a sense of your voice as a choreographer. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's really, it was, it was really, you know, you you have to put a lot of energy, a lot of work into it. There's rejection, and um, and you just have to be able to you know help deal with that in a healthy way. Um, but the more connections you make, the more uh, you know things you can get attached to you know early on, and and they start out small usually, and then get bigger and bigger. Um, and and I think the most important thing is to always that I always try to make sure I was doing my best work. I didn't mm-hmm. blow anything off. I didn't, or at least, you know, not purposely. That's, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if it wasn't my best work, it it's not because I didn't <laughs> uh, meant for that to happen. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think cause that way, cause your reputation always, you know, precedes you in this business. Mm-hmm. We all talk about, you know, the people that we work with and recommend people to other people. Mm-hmm. I wonder when, 
you decided like, okay, the path I want to go down is just this choreography path. You were mentioning before you were kind of trying to balance dancing and choreography. When did choreography start to take over for you and you start to realize like, this is the path I'm going to go down? Um, yeah, it started, it, it's, it started, I guess, in like the mid 2000s or late 2000s, probably. I think I was doing, um, I was on a national tour of moving out uh, the Billy Joel Twilight Tharp mm-hmm. show. And, um, and I was loving it and I was, you know, just really dancing my butt off and, but I was getting a little older <laughs> and it was, it was a little painful, you know? And, uh, so, so I did that for like over a year. And, and then after that, I was like, this is a good one for me to retire on. I think <laughs> I just really loved the show. I had a great time. I I worked so hard on it. And, um, and then that's when I kind of switched gears. And I think that was right around like late, late to the 2000s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's when I you decided know, I'm really going to focus on the choreography solely. Mm. Right. You mentioned something earlier that I think is interesting. And I don't know that we've ever really touched upon when we've spoken to choreographers before, but the commercial component of theater, you know, Broadway is, is for profit. Do you feel like that ever impacts your work? Like, um, you know, well, also you're part of a big creative team and it's not, not the ballets, like, you know, not the what they give someone a premiere at New York City Ballet and say, do whatever the hell you want. But, you know, it is, it's just a different vibe. Like what, how does that impact the work that you are creating? Yeah, it's, it, 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 it definitely is. Uh, it does have an impact because you know that, you know, the goal is for, if it's a commercial project for it to be a commercial success. And sometimes that means that just because you think something's great or you think something's interesting um, doesn't mean that that's going to sell tickets. Hmm. And, Mm -hmm. and so you have to kind of balance that out. You have to figure out like, how do I stay true to what I feel is art, artistically uh you know worthy for this project but also make sure that um you know i'm i'm pleasing the commercial aspect of it uh because mm-hmm. without that i don't have a job right you know right. <laughs> if they can't sell tickets I, I there's i don't have a job and nobody right. has a job. all the people involved right. so you know we all have to keep that in mind and another thing you bring up which is so important in this in like broadway and commercial theater is the the collaboration uh mm-hmm. it's a, it's a skill within itself and it's um really important uh and everybody wants to work with you know people who collaborate well you know who play play together nicely and um uh, you know, myself included, like I want to work with great collaborators and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and that means the director and the composers and the book writer and the, and all the designers. And, and, you know, we all have to work together to, uh, you know, tell the story, make sure it's being told properly and, and in a, in an exciting way. Um, mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it, it, it's a lot of work. It's almost more work in a way, you know, cause you're not doing it, all, you know, you know, when you're doing it all yourself, of course, that's a lot of work. And if you, it, when it's your vision and you're executing everything, of course, that's a lot of work, but there's mm-hmm. something freeing in that way where you don't have to answer to any other department and you're telling right. the art departments what you want. Um, when you have to, when you have to make sure that you're, you're in, in sync with every other department, that that's a lot of work and it's a lot of negotiation. This is really making me think because I'm kind of like comparing to our world of ballet. So a choreographer comes in, creates a ballet. There's not always a lot of people coming. Maybe the artistic director might say, I don't like this part, but there's more or less they're just going to, like you're saying, create what they want to create. And that's what goes out on stage. Do you ever have instances where you put together a number and then all these other departments look at it and they're like, you know, commercially, this is not going to work the way we want. Like, are, what kind of editing are we going through in terms of, you know, working with these other departments to create a uh, work like this? 
Yes, 100 percent. I've I've you know, I've come up with ideas and they're like, yeah, that'll never work. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but you know what? You know what we do is we start out so far in advance planning these things. You know, we talk about it and we meet about it. We have a reading. Then we have a meeting, another meeting. And we look at the set design and see how that can integrate into the number or the number can integrate into the set, can inhabit that. Um, and we it, it we just then we have a workshop and see how everything works and and then have another reading and you know so that by the time you're getting into full production and the the marquee is up and there's rehearsals going on in the theater that it's really been thought through right but you, right. but that's where that all the negotiation takes place sometimes for the years before you ever see the show mm. um, right and uh, but but still but it's still going to continue once you get on stage and the physical set is there and you realize, OK, this is not working as we planned. We need to pivot um, or the audience year in previews and the audience just is not reacting the way you thought they would. And you're like, this is such a good number. I don't get it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. you know, and, and then you redo it. Right. It's making me think of a part in Twyla's book, The Creative Habit, where she's talking about how two different experiences she had one where she had total autonomy and could do whatever she wanted use any dancers any length of ballet and she was just very disappointed in her work and the other with the opposite experience i mean i'm sure there must be instances for you where having a limitation put upon you actually made you create something that you ended up liking maybe even more than you would have if you had had just total free reign can you think of anything like that where it's like yeah yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, I, I, like some of the some of my favorite collaborators are the ones that inspire me to do more or to do, you know, uh, the, there's a, a, a one of my collaborators, uh, John Rando, who's a director. And, um, you know, every, every time uh, we work together, he loves dance so much. And so I'll put in a dance break in something and he's like, oh, it's so good. Make it longer. More, uh-huh. more, more, more. And you know, uh-huh. it's rare when a when a theater director would say more dance, more dance, more dance. Uh-huh. So uh, you know, it's pretty. Yeah. And then there's a there's another circumstance where I was trying to figure out. Um, there was a piece I was choreographing, and I didn't know. It it was like didn't want to dance. You know, the song mm-hmm. and the, the moment didn't want to dance, but but the but the aesthetic called for it. Like it was it needed right. movement. So um, I just created this new kind of, you know, just new way for me to come up with movement that mm-hmm. was very kind of like based in in lyrics and it was very gestural uh, and it was like a new vocabulary for me, but I, right. it came out of necessity. Um, and it's something, it's a, like a new technique I use when I find myself in a position where I can't uh, kind of like, figure out how the movement should be used, but the, the moment requires movement. Mm. So it was, like, Another- I was like, I felt like I was, I was kind of like, you know, boxed in a corner and then uh, out of that, like desperation, I, it was like, a, I'd create a new vocabulary for myself. Cool. Right. That's so cool. You know, another thing I'm thinking hearing you talk about, um, being on a team with other creatives and having that push pull, I feel like it sets you up um, to move into a position of directing shows, which is something you've started doing recently as well, which again, in the ballet world, it's like someone could be a choreographer for like decades and have no clue in a way what the artistic director does, but you're constantly in communication with every member of different creative teams. So you are, you do have an inside view of those things. So when you do move into a different leadership role, you're not starting from scratch. So maybe you could tell us about a little bit about what that experience was like for you moving into role of director. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's um, it's really hard. It's a hard job. <laughs> um, uh, I, I sometimes I sometimes really enjoy it and sometimes wish I was just choreographing it. <laughs> Some, uh, you know, because because the thing is is you know when I'm choreographing and I'm working with a director, 
we have this relationship usually, you know, where I can go, hey, I'm having trouble figuring this out. What do you think about this? And that we can bounce ideas mm-hmm. off each other. You know, they can say, this tra- can you fix this transition? Or, you know, right. staging is really we- awkward. What, what can we do? And I can help the director. Uh, you know, we can work together and we have we have this this, uh, you know, partnership uh, that gives us a sense of safety in a way. And when mm-hmm. I, I'm the director and choreographer of a production, I don't have that. Mm-hmm. It's very lonely. Right. And, mm-hmm. and it's, it's, um, and you have to answer to a lot more people. I have to be the representative to every creative on the team. I'm, I'm representing every creative and protecting them from the, even the higher ups, from the producers, you know, so right. all the notes usually come to me. And then I have to figure out, okay, now how do I get these notes to the rest of the departments in a way that they can respond productively Mm -hmm. and not be upset that somebody has, you know, given a note on their work or something like that. So um, it's, it it is tricky uh, and and it's Mm -hmm. a whole different skill set and it's exhausting, um, but can be obviously hugely rewarding right Um, Mm -hmm. but uh, after i do a a job like that where i'm director and choreographer i always always appreciate when i get to do a job where i'm just the choreographer next (laughs) are Mm -hmm. you interested at all (laughs) in being the director and not the choreographer like working with a different choreographer have you done that before um yeah I, i have a project that i'm working on now where i'm the director and kind of like I'm like the overseeing choreographer for a group okay. of choreographers. Oh. So uh yeah, I mean it's it's great as long as as long as um I think I think be, it's it's great because I I just love working with movement and using movement to help tell the story. So mm-hmm. I think as, as long as I can still have my hand in how the movement tells the story a bit, I think mm-hmm. I think I would be I'm interested in that kind of those kinds of positions, but if it's like if I'm completely hands off with with any kind of physicality or movement, then I think it would kind of bum me out a little. Yeah, <laughs> I would get yeah. a little, you know, a little FOMO. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so obviously, you know, you're very renowned in the theater world, but you have an Emmy from your work in television um, on the show Smash, which I love. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell us a little bit just about how that transition happened? How did you get the job to begin with? And what were some of the major differences you found working in the two different fields? Okay. So the story of how I got Smash. Um, I was, it, this was like maybe 2010. And and like I said, that's when I had just, just transitioned. And I felt like I wasn't getting anywhere as a choreographer. Uh, you know, I was having trouble getting work. Um, I felt like my peers were surpassing me and I was very, you know, not that I was, yeah, I, not that I was, was unhappy for them. I was happy for them, but I felt like I was just kind of getting left behind and and didn't know if I was going to continue to do choreography anymore and, and thought about a transition into a completely different field. I didn't know what it would be, but, um, and then, uh, so I was choreographing a, a, a benefit for New York University, their their annual gala, and it was I was asked to do one or two I forget uh, pieces on their students, and um, it was really I mean it was a very small kind of gig, and and I you know had plenty of time to do it because I wasn't working much, uh, and so I did it, and and it went it actually went really really well. And I was very happy with the work. Like I was saying before, always putting your, you know, your best work out there. Uh, and um, so Michael Mayer, who's a, a theater and opera director and and television and movies, and he was in the audience because he's a, an alum of NYU. And he contacted me afterwards and he was working on Smash. He was, they, they were in prep. And he said, um, you know, I really liked your work and I think you would do great at this. Uh, but I have to convince everybody else, including Steven Spielberg, to hire you because nobody knows who you are. Right. Um, so uh, he literally flew to L.A. with my VHS tape 
<laughs> and, <laughs> I think by then we were on to DVDs <laughs> um, <laughs> and showed it to, to, to Steven Spielberg and, and um, convinced him that, that they should hire me and the other, the other executive producers as well. And so I, I shot the pilot and it was, you know, it was really Michael who, who was, uh, you know, pushed for me to do that. And uh, the pilot, you know, th- that was the number, the big number, and that was national pastime. Um, and it was a big hit that everybody loved it. And then we went to series and it was, uh, so cool. It was, a, it was a really wonderful experience because you're, you know, working with so many talented people, the dancers were fantastic. And so were the, you know, all the, all the actors on the show and the, the, the vocalists and, and, and the writers and, you know, and, and I had the, the bank account of NBC behind me. So, you know, mm-hmm. they were, the budget was <laughs> insane. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was, it was really a, a great experience and I learned a lot. I had not really worked for, uh, on camera work before that. Uh, and I had to kind of like learn as I went along. Can we talk about that a little right. bit? Cause I think as dancers, when you're doing film, obviously your dancing quality has to be different than if you're projecting out to an audience, it's just completely different experience. So for you as a choreographer, I would imagine very different as well. So how are you, um, playing with, the differences between creating for the camera, something that's much more, much closer than something for a big stage. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I was lucky because my assignment was to create uh, numbers that would be on a big stage. So you it know, still had it, that it, feel, it was right? Like, we, you know, the show, it's a show about Broadway. We need big Broadway numbers or sometimes mm-hmm. smaller Broadway numbers. But so, so it was in, that was in my wheelhouse. It, what I had to figure out is, what's going to look good on camera right. what is the camera going to see right. what's going to make the final edit um mm-hmm. and that was my learning curve uh it was you know the we had we just had great we had great um you know editors and cinematographers and camera camera people so that helped tremendously you know but as, after you know the first few episodes i could see what was working and what was looking great and what ended up you know being on the final edit and what didn't and then I could really kind of like focus Mm. on 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 those things as I created the numbers and 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 I would help I would kind of like film them on my iPhone by then we had iPhones (laughs) (laughs) and uh and kind of like film it you know you know in in ways that I thought it would look great and then send that off to the director and cinematographer oh. and say, look at this and here's some ideas of how you can shoot it, um, you know, to give them a little head start on on how to shoot mm. it because we're always in a tight schedule. Sure. Right. Yeah. Let's shift gears and talk a little bit about a project you've been working on. Um, the Lyric Opera of Chicago's production of what? West Side Story, which is running now through June 25th. Um, obviously, West Side is something that you are very intimately familiar i love that that it was your it's your big break and now we're back at it um what's your role been primarily are you restaging the robbins choreography how much of the of your own input are we putting into it just give us a rundown of what you how you've been involved with this particular production yes uh for this particular production i'm restaging the robbins choreography that's that's kind of like what i do for for every production that I work on, um, mm-hmm. I don't do my own choreography. But what I do have to do is because every production, uh, the cast is different. Their abilities are going to mm-hmm. have gonna, they're going to have different abilities. They're going to have the set is different. The set design is often very different. You know, sometimes it's in a, a proscenium stage. Sometimes it's in a three quarter thrust. So what I have to do is just kind of adapt the choreography for the space and for mm-hmm. the cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, the director it, it will have a, a, a bit of a different vision for one thing or another. And I had just adapt the choreography so that it's still staying true to Robin's vision and his, you know, original intention, but fits the specific production. Sorry if right. this is a silly question, but it, would it be kind of like similar to how we have repetitors in the ballet world that are setting the choreography for a choreographer like Robbins or Balanchine? Is that kind of a similar thing? Would you consider exactly it? Exactly. Similar. Okay. It's exactly yeah. Similar. Interesting. That's so yeah. cool. And so what has yeah. this particular production been like for you? What has this experience been like? Um, it, you know, it's been fantastic. It's because 
uh, it's the opera and they mm. have big casts. Mm. So I usually don't get this many dancers. Uh, right. You know, usually, you know, in other productions that, you know, they're trying, it, the cast is only as big as you can get away with, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is this, we have, I have more jets and more sharks and more, more dancers than I normally get. So that's mm -hmm. been really fun. Um, and, uh, and obviously the, you know, having the, the lyric opera orchestra has been really beautiful, you know, having, having 44 musicians play you know really really talented musicians play the score is like is, is is a real treat because again rarely when you do a full production of west side story uh will you have a, a pit uh orchestra that's that large wow right oh, i'm sure that music is just so beautiful like that yeah it's amazing <laughs> um uh, you brought up an interesting point that I hadn't really considered too. Is that, like in theater, you you work with such a range of dance skill. You know, I mean, not everyone is a, a, exactly a triple threat and equally talented in every arena. You know, I'm sure you have like wildly talented dancers, and then you have amazing singers and actors who need some help with their kind of own like physical awareness. Like, uh, what how, what are those different ranges bring out in you as a choreographer? Uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's definitely you get a lot of experience working with people of different levels of of dance ability and and movement ability. Um, uh, and I think the key is to you know for for a theatrical piece is to know really know what you're trying to say with the movement. You know what are what what what's the story? Mm -hmm. How would this character move? You know, if it seems if it's if it's you know certain characters you don't want to see bust out into a ballet dance, you know mm -hmm. that would just be so jarring and awkward. Right. You know that's just not how <laughs> they would move. You know, if it's mm -hmm. a, you know a real real kind of like uh, you know character type, you know they mm -hmm. wouldn't move like that. So how would they move? And you have to figure out how how they would move, and then how how then how does that translate? to the actor's body and movement, you know, and what can they then bring to what you're giving them? Because mm -hmm. they know that character pretty intimately, hopefully. So they're going to take that, the information you give them, and then hopefully put some of their own research into that to come up with something that is true for that character and true for, you know, for that storytelling. So, right. uh, you know, I think that's that's the best way for me to approach it, um, you know, and I, I never think it, it never to me, is it like, oh, this is this has to this choreography has to be very, very technical um, or this choreography has to be very, very simple. It's always what is right for the storytelling here. Mm -hmm. And that's right. that's how um, and that's how I approach it. I find this interesting because I'm thinking again, just like comparing ballet to this, like we have a uh, Robin's repetitor and they are so specific about every single step and everything you do and your intention behind it. And then when you're doing this situation, you have people of different capabilities and you can make these changes. How are you making these little alterations to the choreography and, and knowing that you're staying true to the intention? Now, do you mean with the, um, with the Robins, with the West Side Story? Yeah, 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 yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you, as long as you know the intention, mm -hmm. uh, I think, I think you know whether you're staying true to it or not. It, it's like, um, you know, I don't change, it's, it, that's what I don't change is I don't change right. the intention. I learned the intention to, to the choreography from my mentor, Alan. And then mm -hmm. I make sure whenever I have to adjust something, whether it's an angle or a position or something, uh, that the intention is still there. That's mm -hmm. the most important right. thing. And even, you know, the truth is, is, you know, some some dancers, they can do certain athletic moves and, and other dancers, sometimes they can't. And so you have to adjust it. Um, mm -hmm. for the, for, for whatever their abilities are, you know, and they might have a different special ability. And then I, you know, so say for, for example, just as hy hypothetical, one person, 
uh, can do, you know, uh, this leap that is supposed to happen, but another person can't, they, but they can do a backflip. Well, okay. That's interesting. Uh, does that backflip, if you did that backflip, would you just be showing off or does that have right. the right intention as that leap would have had mm -hmm. that isn't totally in your wheelhouse? So mm -hmm. you kind of like figure out, okay, no, that backflip back would work or, mm -hmm. you know, no, that doesn't work. That, that mm -hmm. That's not saying the same thing. So we have to like then right. figure out something else. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious if you could just give us a rundown of anything in the pipeline you have coming up that um, we might be able to look forward to after West Side. Sure. Party. Yeah. Well, um, we are working on actually we're bringing Smash to Broadway. So so exciting. Yeah. Back to, yeah. <laughs> speaking of Smash, so I'm, we're working on that right now. Um, it's going to be in the 24-25 season wow. with uh, a lot of the many of the same songs from the series. Um, so that's really exciting. Wow. And um, another show I'm working on is um, called Joy. And that's based on the life of, of Joy Mangano. Um, uh, yeah. So those are, but I'm actively working on both of those right now. And, and I don't know exactly when Joy will open on Broadway, but um, uh, we're, we're doing another workshop later this year. What part of the process well, are you in with the smash? Because you were talking about like the meetings and like, so what part are you in right now? Totally, to totally meetings. Um, after, after this podcast, I'm going to go down to meet the designer uh, to, for, uh, for a meeting, Beowulf, who just won a Tony uh, a couple days oh, ago. So yay. <laughs> shout out to Beowulf. Um, and, uh, he's, and so he's our set designer. So I'm going to go meet with him and check out a space. Uh, so we're, we're doing the meetings. We're doing the, the script revisions. We're doing the um, readings. We have a workshop coming up. Uh, so still early days, but um, uh, it's when all that negotiating starts, right? <laughs> right. Uh, well, I'm super excited. I, Let Me Be Your Star is a go-to karaoke song for me. And I'm <laughs> looking forward to hearing someone that's not me sing it. Uh, <laughs> and of course, to sing your, your work. I mean, sing it live. I, it's just going to be so exciting for the audience, I think. And so... I can't wait for Smash, but if you're in the Chicago area, there, by the time this podcast gets published, it'll be a, about another week of performances. So we encourage all of our listeners to go out and see it. And um, just thank you so much for joining us, Joshua. It's been such a pleasure getting a view into your world of dance and theater. So we really appreciate having you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks so much. Conversations on Dance is part of the ACAST Creator Network. For more information, visit conversationsondancepod.com.